David Perry here with the executive director of the newly moved, newly made bigger, more fabulous Cartoon Art Museum at Fisherman's Wharf. How do you feel, Summer Lee Kosher? I am uh, ecstatic. I can't believe, you know, it's been a long time and the space is beautiful. Yeah. We've worked really hard and I just, you know, all of the pieces came together and we've just been incredibly fortunate and we're just thrilled to be opening again and in this wonderful neighborhood. Now, I am correct. The Cartoon Art Museum is the largest museum dedicated to cartoon art in the United States, correct? It's not the largest. It's it is not. the longest running. Longest running. So, uh, there but is a the larger largest. one in, in Ohio State. Got it. Uh, but we are one of the few in the whole western United States. So, uh, there's maybe a handful of cartoon art museum in the whole United States. And so, we represent the medium um, like very few other places. What would you say to someone who says, well, cartoons are nice, but they're not art? That's what we're here about. Exactly. I mean, uh, we're really here to show the hand of the artist and how the art is made. So, we want to show people the creative side. They look at that art and they buy a t-shirt or they get a toy. But to know that there's an artist behind making it, there's a creator, um, and how it's, they get really interested in the process and how it's created. So we're here to show that part, and also the historic merits and, and people that there's stories to tell. There's opinions that come out of these uh, cartoons. So there's a lot for us to do. Well, congratulations on opening. It's been a long time coming, and congratulations on your leadership. You've been incredibly modest, thanking everyone else, but I just want to thank you. Oh, thank you very much, David. Yeah. Congratulations. Bye bye. So reporting from the Cartoon Art Museum here in San Francisco's iconic Fisherman's Wharf, Summer DeCasher and David Perry. And he'll edit that down. Perfect. We are here with the one and only great Michael Capizola. Thank you for using the word great and saying Capizola correctly. Yo, thank you. I, I mean, I've had practice. Yeah, yeah, you've had practice. You know, I mean, you're like a triple threat. I mean, cartoonist, artist, spokesmodel. I that, mean, well, let's back up. Uh, cartoonist and artist get folded together. Uh, sorry, sorry. And uh, not really a spokesmodel so much as a... Uh, uh, that was bad. That was like Vanna White. I get a comedian yeah, I, that gets stuff. I get, I, as a comedian, I do some... Uh, there was a sausage commercial. Actor, actor, sorry. Comedian. Comedian. And that's it. That's the threat. It's tri triple, quadruple threat. Yeah. All right. So we're here in front of some great art. Yeah. Why are we here tonight? It's the. It is the grand reopening of a museum that uh, has been missed in our absence. It's, I'd say, vital. Like I, I, yeah. I don't want to oversell it, but it's vital to have a museum that celebrates comic and cartoon art. It's legit. It's beloved. Uh, it's informative. Um, conflict resolution through humor. You're getting. You're getting. Political, you know, yeah, you've well, got it all. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, so we've got political art on the wall, we've got all yeah. kinds of different stuff, we've got images from Hellboy, yeah. a particular favorite. Do you think that in an age when politics seems to be everywhere, that this art is even more potent and yes. important? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, useful. Uh, it's like a drug where it's like, hey, the news was bad again, uh, all day. What can I read? You can dissolve into a comic story and lose yourself. It's not. It's. It's not something that can be undersold or undervalued in any way. It's. It's really become such a respected. Nobody's hiding their graphic novels on the Bart. I think that's. I want to thank you guys out there for for not hiding your graphic novel like inside of Sports right, I don't Illustrated. Pretend, I don't have to pretend I'm buying this for my Uncle Jack. Or I get out yeah, Green yeah. Lantern and I read it <laughs> proudly, like I'm reading the Atlantic. So, you, so, so this museum has made. Love, of, uh, I guess you'd call it comic Ophelia, a cartoon yes. Ophelia. Yes, yeah, comic It's brought it out of the closet. Yeah, it celebrates it. It's 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 a it's it's hometown turf. It's mecca for for people who appreciate comic right. art. It's always a pleasure. My pleasure was mine. Thank you, David. The great Michael Capitol. Super. Now introduce me to the guy who made. Malcolm, Mike, congrats. Thank you. The grand reopening. How do you feel? I'm. Absolutely ecstatic. I mean, this has been a beautiful, this is a beautiful occasion. Yeah. Beautiful new space. It is a beautiful space. We've had to move three times over the last 30 years. Every time, we got a better spot. Yeah. But this is the best yet. We have upgraded. We have, and thanks to an army, army of people. When we first started, when we first founded the museum, in the more immortal words of Rodney Dangerfield. The art got no respect. Yeah. And then 33 years later, there's not a major art 
museum in the United States that doesn't have some comic art in its collection. Mm -hmm. And we have weathered the storm, and we are, of course, the only, the longest standing cartoon art museum in the United States. And in a word, Malcolm, how, how excited are you for the new museum and the new exhibit? I'm very excited. That's, That's all I can do. I guess you can't really say it in just one no, word. No, I, I try not to. All right, thanks for your time. So, thank you, Mike.